This is Len and Emily's Supreme Court presentation. Today, I will introduce John Marshall. John Marshall was born on September 21st in 1755 in a county near Germantown on the Virginia frontier. He was the first of 15 children born to Thomas Marshall and Mar Mary Randall Keith. His father was a land survivor for, land for Lord Fairfax and made a tidy income. John Marshall and his father were descendants of the colonist William Randall, who had helped establish the Commonwealth of Virginia. The second one is about John Marshall's education. As a child, Marshall was mainly homeschooled by his father. Marshall said he had copied every word of the essay on men and other moral essays, and he memorized many of the more interesting passages by the time he was 12. In 1767, a young Scotch minister came and developed the first bit of formal education for Marshall. The Marshalls had long before decided that John was to be a lawyer. The last time of formal education came in 1780 during the six weeks stay at William and Mary College where he attended the law lectures of George Wythe. The third one is about Marshall's professional career. During Marshall's 34 years as a Chief Justice, he gave content to the Constitution's omissions, clarified its ambiguities, and added breathtaking swap to the powers it conferred. He set the court on a course for ages to come that would make the U.S. government spring in the Federalist system and the court of the Constitution's expositor. Marshall knew the true meaning of the Constitution, and he meant it to be pariah. He made his position a judicial pulpit to foster the union of his dreams and to compete, if possible, with the political branches in shaping public opinions and national policy. Next one is about John Marshall's president appointment. In 1796, President George Washington offered him the post of Attorney General and U.S. Minister to France, but Marshall declined them both. Marshall began his diplomatic career with French Foreign Minister Tillerand in 1797. Marshall reluctantly accepted President Adams' request to serve as Secretary of State. The senator confirmed his on May 13, 1800. Marshall's tenure as secretary lasted only until early the next year, as Adams declined to run for re-election in 1800. Number 5 talks about John Marshall's landmark. One of Marshall's first landmark cases was Marbury v. Madison which established the basis of judicial review. The case went to Supreme Court in 1803. In another case, the Cohen brothers sold Washington D.C. lottery tickets in Virginia, which was a violation of Virginia state law. They argued that it was legal. The decision is where Marshall and the Supreme Court had to weigh about which court has the final seat is deposed between state and the national government. Next one is about the interesting facts. Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, John Marshall, who had almost no formal schooling and studied law for only six weeks, nevertheless remains the only judge in American history whose distinction as a statesman derived almost entirely from his judicial career. John Marshall proudly served on the Supreme Court until his death on July 6, 1835 at age 79, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Liberty Bell was rung during the funeral procession. The nation mourned his passing. The Supreme Court of New York Times versus United States Daniel Ellsberg believes that America needed to know what was in this report and decided to make the Pentagon paper public. 
Ellsberg copied more than seven thousand pages of document that revealed the history of government's actions in the Vietnam War. In 1971, the decision by New York Times and the Washington Post to print illegal leaked, clarified documents about American involvement in the Vietnam War sparked the, a First Amendment battle between the highest level of government and two of the most respected newspaper in the country. New York Times versus United States remains one of the most important freedom of the press case in American history. This case happened in Washington D.C. Specifications of this case is: in 1971, the New York Times published the first chapter of the Pentagon Papers. The administration of President Richard Nixon then issued federal injunctions against publishing the remainder of Pentagon Papers to both the New York Times and the Washington Post. The federal government argued that the publication of the top secret history would imperil national security. President Nixon's administration did violate the First Amendment. In a six-to-three decision, the court ruled that U.S. government had not met the heavy burden of showing justifications for the enforcement of prior restraint because of President Nixon's violation. This case became Supreme Court of News Media versus United States. The court ordered the immediate end of the injunctions against the publication. The court offered two explanations for its ruling. First, both the history and language of the First Amendment support the view that the press must be left free to publish news, whatever the source, without censorship, injunctions, or prior restraints. Second, that the publication of a history of U.S. action in Vietnam would not endanger current military personnel by revealing their locations or movements. The case reached the Supreme Court in June 1971.